Mary from Kick and Crochet and today we're going to make an earring holder. What you're going to need is some paint, brush, palette. You're going to need a piece of crochet lace that is stretchy but a little bit smaller than your frame to start with and you're also going to need some scrapbook paper or you could just paint the back of your frame. Um, make sure that you have an internal piece of uh, cardboard or something that you'll be able to um, glue that scrapbook paper onto and stretch the lace around. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the frame because I just have this really cheap wood frame that I decided that I would like to make gray. So I'm going to paint that real quick and we'll keep going. Okay, so now that the frame is painted, uh, I'm going to move that aside so that it can dry while I uh, work on the next part. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm going to take that piece of cardboard. I actually just cut out um, the back of a watercolor paper pad that I had to use this, and I cut it down to size. And I picked out some scrapbook paper. I tried out a bunch of different colors, but I like this one. Um, it's a little bit wider than my frame because I have 11 by 13 in, or 11 by 14 inch frame. And this one is 12 by 12 paper, so I'm going to cut off an inch off the side uh, so that it will fit on the paper. I'm also going to have to cut off um, some strips of another paper just to make it tall enough because, again, my frame is 14 inches high and my paper is only 12 inches. So. I will do that and then um, glue them onto the paper. So I've got my main paper, looks good, but I need to make paper for these top and bottom pieces, so I'm going to cut these to two inches just so there's some overlap so I don't have to worry about um, getting them lined up exactly right when I glue them down. going to be a little bit too long also because again they're 12 inches and my paper my frame is only 11 inches wide so I'm going to cut off an inch of the side of each of those also. my paper cut. Now you could use basically anything you want to glue this down. Um, Mod Podge, glue stick, whatever scrapbooking glue you might have would probably be the best, but I'm just going to use a glue stick. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because it's going to get covered up by earrings and lace. So I'm just glue it down. I'm going to glue these strips onto the top and the bottom before I glue on my main paper.
my big paper and again I'm not gonna worry too much about making sure it's absolutely perfect um, if you really want it to look nice you could put like a layer of Mod Podge over the top of it or something um, and that would make it so that I wouldn't like catch the edge of the paper with an earring hook or something when I hung it up but I'm not gonna do that because I think it will be fine and uh, smooth it out. It doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's a little wrinkly. You can kind of see where the glue stick was, but uh, when it's finished, you're really not going to notice it. Okay, now exciting times. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that you do need um, some of the red. I'm just using crochet thread and a uh, tapestry needle and this is what I'm going to use to attach my lace to the board. So I'm just going to thread this, um, take out a length and tie a knot uh, to make it easy to start. Also I mentioned that your lace has to be, um, well it doesn't have to be, but it should be a little bit smaller but a little bit stretchy. So um, you'll see why. We want it to be a little bit tight so that it will support the weight of the earrings. So that's why we want it to stretch over the board. And that also, a lot of the time, crochet lace kind of contracts in upon itself. And so to be able to stretch it means you're going to see a lot of the stitch definition a lot better and it's going to look really pretty. So when you're making your piece of lace, make sure you keep that in mind. Um, and kind of test it out a few times to make sure that it's going to stretch enough to fit whatever size frame you're wanting to make. And you can make any type of crochet lace. I used a spiderweb pattern and so you can't really even see the pattern when it's not stretched, but at the end it's going to look awesome. And I'm going to post a tutorial on how to do the spiderweb lace pattern that I used for this project if you want to make the, the same kind. But you could really use any any kind of crochet lace you want. Hairpin lace, broomstick lace, pineapples, you know, whatever. Just a plain mesh. I actually made one of these a long time ago for myself that was just plain mesh and I loved it, but I've decided I'm ready for something new, so I'm making myself a new one. Oh, so the first thing, um, you get it started and you, you stretch, stretch the corners over um, and Again, you want a little bit of tension. So you're going to thread it through, just going back and forth. And the, the closer together you make these, then the more even the stretch will be. And that looks nice. Uh, but then again, if you make them really close, then you're going to go through a lot of yarn or crochet thread. So that's kind of a bummer also. So a happy balance, maybe every half inch to three quarters of an inch or so. Um, I ran out of thread, so I'm tying some more on. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way across, so I'm going to speed the video up here. Okay, when you get to the corners, um, make sure that it's even. So I'm just going to spread it out because I got a little squished in one corner. And then I'm going to finish the corners vertically. And I'll turn it around here so you can see what it looks like so far. You can 
see it stretch nicely lengthwise, but it still, you know, needs to get stretched the other direction. And you can see already more stitch definition, but it's going to look even better as we finish. So I'm going to wrap this corner around a little bit and make sure that it's covered. And now I'm going to go back across the other way and grab the other corner. And I want my lace to overlap at least maybe like half an inch to an inch. You can make it more. If you made it too big and it covers more of the back of the board, that's going to be fine. It's not going to cause you any problems, so don't be afraid to let some hang over the back. Um, and then we're just going to do this again all the way across the back and then, and then tie it off. Alright, so I've gotten across and now when you look at the front you can see it looks great. You can see really great stitch definition and it's pretty even. Um, so I'm going to just tie it off. I like to kind of go back across the other corner. I don't know why. You probably don't really have to do that. It's just what I want to do. So I'll go through and then to tie it off I'll go under some of the threads, over and then through my loop of thread. And I'll do that a couple of times just to tie a knot. You could tie whatever kind of knot you want, but that's what I'm doing. And then I will just trim off that yarn. One bonus of this is I didn't have to weave in my ends of my lace piece because I knew that I could just leave them in the back of the work so you can see some loose tails of my lace. And uh, they can just stay there. So now I've got this beautiful piece of lace attached to my board and it is time to put it back in the frame. So my frame is dry now, it looks pretty good. Um, this frame actually got broken a while ago so I glued it back with Elmer's glue, hopefully it lasts. <laughs> Alright, so my board fits nicely in there. You might, depending on what type of yarn you use, need to trim your board a little bit smaller than your frame, but I'm using a really thin ribbon yarn for this one, so I knew it was going to fit just fine, so it's trimmed pretty close. And I would recommend any, any thin yarn. You could use crochet thread, but I wouldn't use a thick yarn for this because it will just make it really hard to put it back in the frame. And also I would not choose a fuzzy yarn because then your earrings will stick to it and, and pull on the thread. Uh, but otherwise, the options are really kind of limitless. You can use whatever you want. 